Greetings. Before I start, I would like to thank the organizing team for INIF for pulling off such a wonderful international film festival. And most especially, I would like to thank Ujuako Akukwe Mwakalo and Obako Simoba for giving me the opportunity to speak at this event. My name is Yvonne Choma Mbanefu and in this talk, I'm going to explore um, heritage and storytelling representations in film, most especially African film. In February of this year, just before the pandemic started, I was waiting to board a flight at um, going to Tel Aviv. And when I noticed that a lady sitting next to me had spilled her coffee, I offered her my pack of baby wipes. And naturally, after that, we started talking. She asked me where I came from or where I was from. And I said I was from Nigeria. This lady said, oh, that she knows someone called a name who is from Kenya. And do I know this person? So I said, no, I don't know them. I resisted the urge to mentally roll my eyes and wonder how in 2020, someone didn't know the difference between Nigeria and Kenya and didn't realize that, that Africa isn't made up of one street. Now, you may laugh at what transpired in this encounter, one of many over the years, or you may have even experienced this kind of, um, or you may have experienced a version of this scenario before. But ask yourself this, as a person of African or black descent, how much do you really know about your own culture or your own history or or stories happening around your area or everyday life of people from your community or even how much do you know about other countries in Africa or their cultures or their stories how much do you know and how much do your children know about the cultures that they came from or the history of their families or anything about their community. So my talk today will explore how heritage and storytelling go hand in hand and how we need to be more intentional in the films we create and the stories we tell. As filmmakers, we, we already know about the power of combining text and audio and images to create um, special or unique narratives. But sometimes we're also unaware of how much impact colonialism has had on the kind of stories we're telling and the kind of stories we continue to tell even today. We're also unaware of how colonialism has shut down or modified the way we think about our heritage and also the way about our heritage and all the parts that make up who we are as a people. There is a growing demand for African content. The growth of the African film industry is finally an avenue to remove or reduce the huge trope that has followed Africa for centuries, that of being regarded as the dark continent. A lot of interesting films are emerging in Africa but the tragedy of this is that opportunities to view these films inside of Africa are very rare. The best African films that go on to win awards and prizes at Western film festivals never ever get shown all around Africa. Also some of the films that have been made in Africa have not really shown um, a positive or united view of the continent. Rather, it has produced a series of complex and sometimes contradictory visions of Africa. Representation in film simply means how different people or different parts of the community or demographics are portrayed in films. 
now a lot of um the conversation going on in the world now is how western films don't really portray um, minorities or people from different um communities in the right way or that they are underrepresented but we've actually um we actually we as filmmakers african filmmakers don't think about representation within african films whether we are actually serving all the demographics and all the communities and all the themes that we should actually be talking about or creating stories about so just how important is representation in african films representation in african films is extremely important because it um gives us that ability to tell a more complete story from different angles and not just one angle um this is be because not um the people that consume african films are from different walks of life a lot of them are seeking to understand what um the western um media isn't giving them a lot of them also genuinely want to know um about you know quote unquote the dark continent um an example i gave um okay um an example i'll give now is a few years ago my children wouldn't watch um nollywood films and that was because they related to um you know violence and black magic and you know and i know that um a lot of the um story the themes in the films are misrepresented and not entirely accurate um which a simple um you know simple research would help solve all these problems um i remember looking around for films that would there were more family friendly and i couldn't find any so for most of my children's childhood um they didn't have any african films to watch maybe there were but i couldn't find any in the world we live in today identity is increasingly becoming very important so you find people um in the african diaspora who are seeking their roots who would like to learn about their identities and their cultures and their heritage where they come from by african diaspora i mean the voluntary and involuntary movement of um, people of african descent over the past few millennia out of africa and they are scattered all over the world you have the black people in um, brazil um african americans and you have people in black people in europe over the um past 100 year a few hundred years and you also have um black people in asia and black people in the americas like the caribbean islands so all this um demographics all these people are seeking to know more about africa um they want to know more about the culture they want to know about the stories um young people all over the world and young people in africa as well are looking for black role models to emulate there's a huge lack of black role models or stories about black role models um from past um times and current times and all this could be making made into films um as biopics as um you know documentaries as animations um so there's so much that we can do now to build up um a huge bank of um films or, or heritage uh which people can watch in a few years from now or a few hundred years from now and a lot of these uh, materials um are lying all around us we have all elderly people 
our elderly elderly relatives who can tell us stories that we can now um, create stories from or use them as a base to you know create contemporary stories because nothing stops us from you know taking an old story um, and molding it into a contemporary story so um, a lot of people think that um, history and culture are cobwebby and old and boring but a lot can be done with um, just a picture of a carving um, taken in the late 1900s or 1800s can be changed into you know a, or can be put into a storyline in today's world an example of that is in um, um, Black Panther where um, a lot of things were borrowed from different parts of Africa and then used in the film so most times people wouldn't naturally think of science fiction and Africa or science fiction and relics from the past like masks for example the um, one of the masks used in um, used in Black Panther was inspired by an old Igbo mask, Mwedike mask, and then part of it had uh, part of the film had a wall, a panel. In a part of the film, there was a panel where um, CBD was used to de decorate the wall. So these are things that um, you know can be used to enrich the stories we tell, and in this way we can dip into the past to create um, you know stories for now which will be useful to um, people um, accessing this, the stories now and in future so in um, in the course of my work with um, culture and heritage I've come across so many um, tre different treasure troves of um, African art, African history African artifacts that can, you know, sort of supply um, endless ideas for inspiration for narratives and films, you know. And um, unfortunately, a, a lot of these things are hidden in museums in the West, in the Western world. And um, you know, it's now left for us as African filmmakers. To, to seek out all these um, materials, material and um, non-material culture, and then integrate it into um, stories that we, we will tell to strengthen our standing as people, to give um, young people coming up pride in being African, and um, you know, sort of to gain our space in the world. Um, there are so many things that can be taken and used in different ways to, you know, fashion out narratives, and these include um, folklore. Um, Africa has endless amounts of um, folk stories that can be used in different, so many different ways, and um, all these are lying to waste, and um, nobody's using them. And then the people that have access to them and people that know a bit about them are all passing away. Um, there's this um, African proverb that when an old man dies, it's as if a library has burned down. So you can imagine the elderly people passing away um, with the knowledge of, um, you know, the last level of orality. Um, you know the the usual oral tradition passed down from um, you know family to family. Um, a lot of the people who are passing away now are taking you know with them so many stories of their culture, um, of life, what life was like when they were young, and what life was like when their own parents and grandparents were young. Um, all we're left with really now 
our um, accounts of what Africa was like then from the eyes of colonizers who had their own agenda when telling the story. So what we have now in museums and old books are not really what was. It was what we see in those books and in those accounts of the explorers, the missionaries and the colonizers are their own perspective of Africa. Now, another thing we can um, borrow from and use to create narratives are fashion. Um, I was looking at some um, hairstyles from 200 years ago in Africa and, uh, and 150 years ago. And I was so fascinated. A lot of these um, hairstyles can be can comfortably be, you know, worn today. And the way um, elaborate, the elaborate hairstyles and the things that were used to decorate the hair then, um, all these are hidden away or hidden in plain sight and nobody's integrating them into films and stories. And another one is um, poems, songs, music. There's a treasure trove of ancient songs and you know, chants and, you know, poems and dances that are not being integrated into films. Another one is um, art. Art is a huge one. And most of um, old African art were functional art. Um, and by functional art, I mean that they were objects that were created for daily use. So you might get a wooden spoon, carved wooden spoon, and it's not art as we know it now. It was art that was used in an everyday um, capacity. Um, you have masks, you have mats, you have um, stools, you have, and a, a, quite a lot of these are hidden in, in museums in the Western world and in universities with um, Africana schools. Um, these are things we need to seek out and then, um, you know, create into our own version of our stories. And um, we have crafts and skills. Um, there were skills that were used in the olden times that, you know, uh, have all but disappeared. But still, stories can be told about them. And the big one is um, African spirituality and religion. Um, the Western media has ingrained in us the notion that African spirituality is evil and it's only Christianity that is pure and good. And with that, a lot of um, the, the mode of conduct and behavior has disappeared from many cultures in Africa. And um, with this has gone um, world view of many cultures, um, practices and traditions, which um, unfortunately, most of the things that the white people that came to Africa, anything they didn't understand, they labeled it as evil or bad. So we need to go back and um, research all these things and then bring them out and try and restore them or, you know, sort of integrate them in a way that we can consume in today's, um, you know, sort of story storytelling. Um, another one is um, health. There were so many things that were used in treatment of illnesses and herbs and plants and things, you know, which are rapidly disappearing. We these are things that can be integrated again into films, um, not just documentary films, but um, fiction, fiction, all sorts of genres. Um, we can dip into relationships, traditional relationships, and you know, sort of that gives us material to work on. 
um, traditions, geographical location alone can inspire a film or a kind of story. Um, the different ethnic, there are thousands and thousands of ethnic groups in Africa. Not much is known about them, apart from the people that come from that um, community. Um, there's so much that could be told about, um, you know, people from different parts of um, each of the 54 countries in Africa. We also have proverbs, we have history, we have wars all over the years. We have remarkable people who have lived, um, warriors, queens, kings, um, empires, all the empires in um, ancient Africa. They, they, they haven't seen many films about them. So these are things we need to think about, things we need to, you know, sort of intentionally go back and get. And, um, I mean, there are some things I'm, I've, I've obviously missed out on. Um, but just to tell you that there's just so much that is underrepresented in African film. And, um, you know, people are beginning to wake up. And there's a gradual movement, but I'm hoping that this little talk of mine will um, sort of galvanize you, the filmmaker, um, you know, into looking for ways to bring out the heritage and put it into storytelling. Um, there's a proverb in Igbo land that says, Iburu Okoba. Kwa, iburu neku ye akwa. Loosely translated, it means if you're a cock, crow. If you're a hen, lay eggs. So in the film industry, there are so many skills, skill sets. There are writers, there are, you know, animators, there are people, voiceover artists, there are directors, producers, all sorts of people in the film industry. So, um, I think that, um, when we combine all these things and dig into our culture and you know that there are things um things like things under our noses diamonds in our backyard that we haven't yet explored and thought of using you know into you know the films that we're we're, we're going to make in future um we can also do versions of films that are you know are classics in the western world for example um charlie chaplin and silent films i don't know if the, anyone has done silent films in the in the african context but i would personally i would like to see you know if someone could just try and do a silent film maybe <clears throat> the maasai warrior jumping and you know doing things like that so there's just so so much um um the confines um of this talk is can't even you know i can't even scratch the surface of what can be done with heritage culture history and uh, representing it in african storytelling i hope that um, my talk has been you know sort of a catalyst to making you as a filmmaker think of which ways you can um, sort of feed your narrative and in, engage with um, storytelling and also take us to the next level in African storytelling. Come, Thank you.